Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. Today we are picking up the motor series. You probably recognize where we're leaving off. However, today is going to be very different. It's been about mm, 10 minutes since the post office delivered it. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly as it should be. We are taking this project one step in the fancy direction. This is an integral encoder at the back with the motor drive for a simple DC motor. But this has a huge gear reduction, so we'll have even more torque. Excellent. 130 RPM is what we can expect at 12 volts. We are one step closer to success, and that is we've started. Uh, I've defined a, a class here. It's a motor control class. It's really simple, but this is going to make writing our software a lot less of a mess. It's just a good principle to use. Basically, you pass this function in a value from 255 to negative 255, and you tell it the active state of your motor, whether that be positive or negative. In this case, it's positive. And then, yeah, it just ramps up from zero up to 255, full speed forward, and then flips to full speed backward, and then restarts that whole cycle. But yeah, this motor could actually be used for something. So we're starting to get to a more practical use case. All I have to do now is write my next library, which will allow for the encoder position to be read correctly. Well, uh, I guess technically that's just the speed control library because we're going to be using the built-in encoder library uh, in the Arduino IDE. No need to reinvent the wheel here. So yeah, speed control is next. Let's go. Some of you who have been around the block a few times probably won't be surprised by how long it took to set up this brushed DC motor with a gearbox and an encoder to regulate speed and position. It regulates speed okay. I mean, the transient response leaves a lot to be desired, but the, the actual like tolerance of speed regulation is, is pretty good. I did, a, did an all right job with that, but I've built a reasonable code structure here where I have a position controller, which underneath it has a speed controller running a PI loop, which underneath that has a motor driver and it has PWM and interrupts and all kinds of crazy hardware acceleration. And it kind of barely works. <laughs> As you can see by the graph. I, I was having a moment of self-doubt. I was like, really? Motor control? Like, is this really that hard just to do motor control? And yeah. To tell a motor, like this brushed DC motor with an encoder, and saying, hey, go from zero rotations to one rotation. <laughs> That's hard. It is really satisfying to see this motor with a reasonable amount of accuracy swing around, and you can see it oscillating around the true value you can see it physically and in the graph. This is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. That is so cool. All right, we're off to the races. Oh my goodness, that's all it took? <laughs> All I had to do is up the control time. <laughs> no, that's just not fair. I suppose that makes sense. A quarter of a second is really long for motor control. The motor just moved too far. So at any rate, right? It's like, I just look at this motion control problem, right? As a general problem. And if I was somebody who wasn't doing a motor control project, like if I was someone that wanted to actually accomplish something with this motor, to like prototype a system and or build some kind of machine, like I would be really frustrated right now. 
because I have a dev kit. I have a motor controller. I've got the motor. I've got the encoder. I've got all the right pieces, but just integrating them and making it do something useful is incredibly difficult. And we're not talking about like crazy circuits here, right? We're not talking about, you know, cutting edge technology. We're talking about spinning what's functionally a, a hobby DC motor, like a, a textbook control systems problem, it, easier than a textbook control systems problem. Oh, that is cool. All right, I have to try. I have to try the disturbance. Oh, it fights back. Oh, it fights back. I can't turn it hard enough. I need a pliers or something. You can see me trying. I'm just not very strong. Sorry. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, you wouldn't want that kind of oscillation in a system, but as a proof of concept, as a starting point, with PID parameters, I just guessed something that looked okay. Oh, that is so satisfying. That is so satisfying. I mean, except I hate the oscillation. I hate the overshoot and the ringing, but... You can see it moving. A little bit of trapezoidal wave shaping, and this would look a lot better because we'd smoothly approach our target velocity. Right? So I need to be smart, right? I need to calculate the position error and decide what speed to use. Okay. I think it's time to be done now. <laughs> I added in a quick and dirty speed tweaker thing, but it doesn't appear to be working very well. I had it set up. I had it working. I don't know. I think tonight is just not my night. Uh, but this is a very promising starting point. And I'm sure if we come back at this with a fresh head and a new perspective, I'm sure we'll get a lot more done than I'd ever expect to, which is a wonderful thing. But for now, we're going to need to park this here. I really look forward to our next video where we will be discussing all sorts of things. First of all, we need to fix this. We need to finish it and get it right. But then, of course, we're going to have to try to spin a board to control this motor while also looking forward to a, a three-phase motor, something like a stepper or a brushless DC motor, we're gonna take what we learned from this and we're going to try to apply it to that. And I don't even know if we're gonna need to prototype it with breadboards and stuff. We can probably use this as a starting point and then work from there. But either way, I'm super excited to get started and, uh, and play around with some more hardware. I think it's gonna be a ton of fun and I can't wait. Uh, before we go, I want to give a special thank you to our members, both on Patreon and YouTube. Your support really helps to keep this channel moving. It makes great projects like this one possible. And uh, you'll find some links down below uh, to where I got the motor and controller and stuff like that. It really isn't anything special, but if you want to check it out and learn more about it, I'll drop some links down in the description. Um, yeah, but also want to give a thank you to everyone who watches, is subscribed, shares what we do with others, or... Really, just anyone who interacts with EE for everyone. It's awesome. This community would be nothing without you, and I, I really appreciate all that you guys do. So, without further ado, I hope you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching EE for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>